uh, accounting revenue errors is not about fraud. We're not talking about fraud here. Fraud is the malicious intent to steal, to swindle people by top management, board of directors, or individuals. That could be directed toward assets, uh, manipulation of financial statements to stockholders, and so forth. What I'm talking about here is accounting revenue errors. That could be due to a number of reasons. Misunderstandings, misapplication, and sometimes just stuff happens. Stuff happens because we don't understand or sometimes there's tremendous pressure on management to do things because things happen. And uh, one of the studies that I've been looking at for some time is how we can do some things. Now, in auditing, there's been tremendous pressure on us as auditors to address the issue of fraud, of course, but also on the issue of keeping on top of that. And as you know, in the audit model, we have to start with the top down. We start with a risk assessment. The risk assessment, we analyze the top board of directors for corporate governance. We look at our risk, define what could be a high priority as far as the business nature. If the business is involved with high risk nature, be it financial derivatives, we look at that versus maybe involved with high inventory counts and we define our, our, our risk, our audit system to address those risks as we move down the line to doing substantive testing and tests of details and so forth like this. So in the issue there though, we still need to look at being able to predict the possibility of errors. So SAS 56 and SAS 99 are standards that address the issue of revenue recognition. As auditors, especially in the model of continuous auditing, we have to be cognizant going in, during, and after the audit that we have to have models that help us assist that. Now, in that situation is the more we can have in our toolbox, our toolbox are many that can help us do that, the better we can do. Uh, the, the research problem that I discuss here is the ability to identify and predict accounting revenue errors, to provide lower monitoring control agency costs for public accounting firms with public stock firms, which are public, you know, stock firms in New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. The public accounting firms need a better method to predict stock firms that commit accounting revenue errors in the future. This leads to higher control costs and lower corporate governance value to the audit committee. As you know, all our public accounting firms must report to the audit committee of how we're doing. If we cannot predict accounting revenue errors, it leads to higher audit costs, which leads to higher transaction costs, which leads to higher costs to the stockholders. So we're trying now to provide a tool to reduce those costs by being able to predict ahead what firms would do that. That's what the game is being played right now as auditors. Uh, and I am a big believer in continuous auditing, believing in tools like, uh, uh, well, let's continue on with our game. Now, some of the current literature out there, there's been a lot, of course, on fraud, bankruptcy, and so forth, but in the issue specifically of accounting revenue errors started very much back with my good friends at University of Utah, Lobeck, Martha Innings, and Willingham, where they did a great survey of about several hundred public accounting partners in the United States in 1989, where they identified three conditions for errors. Condition, motivation, and opportunities. And they found within theirs that people commit uh, fraud and commit errors if the conditions are right, 
which could be an economic condition where the industry sector is declining, where the motivation is right, where I am under tremendous pressure to do something, maybe because I have a board who is creating incentive plans that say, if I don't meet my numbers, I must then do something or else, and opportunity. I must be in a position to do something or else I can't do something. If I'm the janitor of the firm, it's not that I don't want to improve. I don't have the opportunity to push the numbers. But if I'm the CEO and the staff upstairs, I do have the opportunity to make the changes. So the Lubbock, Inning, and Wilhelm study was a groundbreaking uh, initial work that actually identified with using public accounting firms, partners, and that was the beginning of some fundamental uh, study about what is actually happening in the United States. Coakley and Brown did the first work in neural networks, which said that material errors, and they looked at 36-month data, but that was the first study of using neural networks in the research of accounting revenue errors. Woe looked at tax cases using 90 cases that were fraudulent and 90 cases that were not, but that work was done pretty much using tax cases. Buston Weinbach in 1998 was the first one that actually was able to create an accuracy for this using 800 observations. And the neural network in that case was able to create 68% accuracy using simulation data, which meant it was not actual data at all. They simulated that situation pretty much. Lynn Weinbeck and Becca use a fuzzy neural network using six financial ratios from 1980 to 1985. Used 200 firms, 160 were in the error firms, and 40 were errors. And the only thing that came out of that was that they were able to prove that the fuzzy neural network was better at predicting non-error firms were better than logistic, but were not significantly significant improving error firms. So it was kind of ambivalent in that situation. NASDAQ and Tosca in 2003 uh, basically was a metadata file for the last 10 years and did not show any significance as far as a predicting accounting revenue errors. Koskova in 2004 uh, published a paper which pretty much summarized again what has happened in the last five years. Now, in Koskova and back in 2007, looked at it from a continuous audit point of view. They said that neural networks in their paper were just competitive with logistic regression. Rogatava and Levine in 2008, they did something very unique. They used a neural network to look at uh, restatements of accounting revenue statements uh, for 180 sample firms and 51 uh, test firms. And the only thing they found out was that they were able to predict non-revenue firms first as compared to logistic regression. So the data has not been able yet to say that uh, anything has been able to predict accounting revenue errors. And the only artificial machine language tool has been used has been neural networks. So we're still pretty much in the gray area out there in, in existing current literature. Doesn't mean there hasn't been other things as far as bankruptcy protection, going concern, management fraud. That's other areas in accounting literature. But as far as this specific area here, this only thing has been out there pretty much. Now, what I decided to do uh, when I got asked for this, I decided to follow a, a, a simple process. And I said to myself, how can we structure this methodology? What I would want to do as an accountant, and uh, oh boy, I hope I didn't bore her. What I want to do is say to myself, I want to establish two different paths. I want to see if CART could do something. And as an accountant, statistician, math person, I wanted to keep it simple. I want to see if can CART do something without the bells and whistles. If I took continuous data, if I took data that had independent variables, net sales, net sales changed from previous year, net sales changed from three previous years, gross profit, and I'm not going to read all this, but pretty much you can see this. These are my independent variables. 
And this information is information that can be attained pretty easily as an accountant. You know what I mean? That's straightforward information that comes from CompuStat for X years. And I use that as my input. Okay, that's pretty sound straightforward. Nothing complex about that. I don't have to do partial differential equations. I don't have to jump upside down. I can handle that. That's my input going in. What's my output? 